The investigation began late one night, while watching George Miller's epic masterpiece, Mad Max Fury Road. A quick IMDB search revealed a true mystery, that sequences from the film were shot using both Ari Alexa and Canon 5D Mark II footage. Some light research has revealed that even more high-budget films are using these cameras as a pair, citing the 5D's use as a semi-disposable stunt cam. Shocking. But this is where director stopped, shrouding their workflows from the rest of the world. We had to know more. So the sleuthing began to expose an intercutting workflow between a high-end digital camera and a DSLR. The Arri Alexa Classic is a high-end digital cinema camera that delivers film-like image quality and natural color reproduction. Raw footage was recorded in 2.8K 12-bit log using Arri's LogC color space. The Canon 5D Mark III is a prosumer DSLR camera that is widely used for photography and videography. Even though it's a lower tier camera, the 5D can still deliver high quality footage. In order to shoot RAW, we needed a camera that had Magic Lantern firmware, which unlocks many features that the Canon's original firmware does not allow. Another thing to note is that the Canon's effective sensor size is more than twice that of the Alexis. To compare the footage on an equal playing field, we had to obtain equal exposures with equal focal length lenses. Since the RE Alexis native ISO is 800, we had to use three stops of neutral density filters to match to the Canon's native ISO of 100. Additionally, the Alexa uses Ari's PL lens mount, while the 5D uses Canon's EF lens mount, meaning that the lenses would not be interchangeable between the two cameras. Once our shooting matrix was set up and our scenes planned out, the shootout began. Before we could properly assess how the two cameras could successfully be intercut with each other, we had to first understand what we're working with. To do so, we laid out a few tests. Dynamic range, color reproduction, noise, sharpness, and ability to composite are all important factors to keep in mind when trying to intercut. In order to look at the camera's sharpness and color reproduction, specifically with skin tones and faces, we set up a lineup with some shady characters and a Macbeth color checker chart. Capturing skin tones correctly is the cinematographer's main objective so seeing the differences between the cameras will tell us in what situations to use the Alexa and in what situations to use the 5D. For these scenes, some primary color correction was applied in order to compare the footage fairly. Taking a look at the mugshot, the first thing you'll notice is that the Canon image has an overall darker, warmer tone to it. The Alexa is a lot lighter and the whites feel a lot more realistic. The skin tones with the Canon footage look a lot more mushed and there's not a lot of differences between the three skin tones. The Alexa skin tones feel a lot more natural. They have a greater difference between the three skin tones. Also with the Alexa footage, you'll notice that it just seems like there's a greater range of colors overall than with the Canon 5D. After an in-depth sharpness analysis, we noticed that the Alexa had a much sharper, crisper image. Looking specifically at faces, we liked the look of the Alexa much better. It had a much more cinematic and crisper tone to it. To quote a dear friend of mine, Ari captures the human side of things. Next, we took a look at the ability to composite from both cameras. To properly assess the compositing capabilities of each camera, we made sure our scene had objects that Nuke would have some difficulty compositing completely accurately, such as the blanket and the headdress. The footage was composited in Nuke using the Primat node. The green was keyed out of the image and the background noise was cleaned to try to get a good alpha channel. You can see in the Canon footage that it loses detail in the frillies of the blanket and there is very apparent edging artifacts. Additionally, the Canon had some trouble compositing the feathers in the headdress. The Aerie does much better in all these aspects, and is much simpler to do a quick composite on.
When comparing any two imaging systems, it's essential to evaluate the noise. For this noise test, a 50mm lens and an ISO of 800 was used for both cameras. We shot the scene four times with each camera, decreasing the exposure by one f-stop each time. Let's take a look at the first clip. At f-stop 2.8 in the 5D image, the blacks feel a lot darker than those in the Alexa. At this exposure, the Alexa has a pleasant grain to it, and the Canon has almost no noise. At f-stop 4, the Alexa clip shows maybe a tad bit more grain, but it remains pleasant. At this point, we start to see a harsh increase in noise on the black section of the Kodak card. At f-stop 5.6, we start to see a stronger presence of noise in the black section of the Kodak card with the Alexa, but for the most part, the noise is still pretty soft. The 5D now introduces noise on the gray portion of the Kodak card. There is an increase of noise in Janet's hair. We also start to get a little bit of blue tone to the blacks due to noise. At f-stop 8, we finally start to see blue noise in the black and gray sections of the Kodak card with the Alexa. The 5D looks atrocious. This isn't an unusable image necessarily, but it's so noisy, you'll probably want noise-canceling headphones. If you're going to match the footage between two cameras, it's imperative that you know the dynamic range of both cameras. If one is larger than the other, then you'll need to know in what situations to use which camera and with what lighting. For our HDR scene, we constructed a scene of about 14 stops of dynamic range, with about 6 or 7 over and 6 or 7 under our normal exposure. The first scene we'll take a look at is with our normal exposure using a 4.0 f-stop on both cameras. Taking a look at the shadow areas of the scene, You'll notice that with the 5D footage, the shadows have a decent amount of information crushed. With the umbrella, you can see the red and yellow, but no green. You can still make out the pole of the umbrella, but the pillow under the umbrella is crushed. Looking at the Alexa footage, you can make out the entire umbrella and the pillow under the umbrella. There's a lot more detail on the homeowner's face with the Alexa footage versus the footage of the 5D. If we take a look at the highlighted areas of the scene, You'll notice that the 5D shows that the window is almost entirely blown out. It's not great. There's a lot of detail lost in the highlights, but with the Alexa, the window is still resolvable. You can make out the details in the curtain and all the details on the windowsill. With our scene now underexposed with an f-stop of 8.0, we'll see that the highlights are completely blown out by the 5D. There is little resolvable detail in the edge of the window, but you can still see the baby. The only highlights blown out with the Alexa are the really specular highlights. You can still see the sheer, the sheer detail in the curtain. In the shadowed areas of the underexposed scene, the shadows are crushed completely with the 5D. You can't see the umbrella or any detail on the door, and there's a large amount of noise within the scene. The only detail savaged is the flowers by the door. With the Alexa footage, you can still make out some of the colors of the umbrella, even though there is some crushing. There's a little bit of noise, but nothing compared to the 5D. Now we'll take a look at our scene overexposed with an f-stop of 2.8. Within the shadow areas of the scene with the Alexa, there's a lot more grain in the shadows, but you can start to see the MPS sign on the door. There's also a lot more detail in our homeowner's hair. You can also make out a lot more detail in the pillow as well. As we look at the 5D footage, we start to see the MPS on the door, and a lot of information is recovered from the shadows, but unfortunately the pillow is still crushed. In the highlighted areas of the scene, you start to see the Alexa fail in the window. The window starts to be pretty blown out and you lose a lot of information in the curtain. However, you can still see the baby. With the 5D, everything is blown out. You can barely make out the baby's head. Everything else in the window is lost. It's no good. 
The goal of any intercutting workflow is to get clips from the two different cameras to be as similar as possible, so that it goes unnoticed by the viewer. Due to differing design philosophies and system requirements, images coming from two different sensors will likely look noticeably different. The best one can do from this point is to ensure that the digital encoding of the sensor signal remains the same for both cameras throughout the rest of the imaging chain. In our case, the first decision that had to be made to ensure this was to record RAW using the Magic Lantern hack for the Canon 5D. This gave us full metadata control over the color space, which we used to match with the RE Alexa's color space. Surprisingly, this process got our footage from both cameras in a position where fundamental sensor and camera differences were easy to identify and correct for. From this point, the exposure of the Canon was brought up to match that of the Ari, and the contrast and white point of the Ari was matched to the Canon, and our process was complete. It is important to note that the cameras were used for very different types of shots. The Ari was used mostly for wide-angle shots, while the Canon was used for specialty shots like the one in the desk and the one in the washing machine. This was done to reflect a real shooting scenario, but it also eased the intercutting process. Other aspects in our favor were the low dynamic range of the scene and the access to good lighting equipment. Behold, the intercutting scene. From our research, we've determined that you can successfully intercut between the Ari Alexa and the Canon 5D Mark III. If you avoid using the Canon in high dynamic range scenes, low light scenes, scenes that will be used for green screen compositing, and close up of faces. And you follow our prescribed workflow. Then it'll be a cinch. Thanks for watching, and have a great day. Yes! Yeah!